Well, two times, two House speakers, and here we are again waiting on Congress to avert a government shutdown before Friday's deadline. A vote expected in the next hour on Speaker Johnson's short-term funding bill. Johnson continuing to push his spending plan hard, but he already knows he'll need Democrats to vote with him to get past the finish line because of growing opposition from his own party. We're not surrendering. We're fighting. But you have to be wise about choosing the fights. you gotta, you got to fight the fights that you can win, and we're going to. Jay O'Brien on the Hill covering it for us. So we are just a little over an hour now to the vote. Some Republicans opposed to the plan. What do you think is going to happen here? Yeah, you're looking at dozens Republicans, oh, dozens of Republicans right now at this hour, Kira, who are opposed to the Speaker's plan. Remember, the plan is a temporary government funding measure that has two different deadlines. One deadline in mid-January for one tranche of government funding, and then another deadline in early February for defense spending and homeland security funding, et cetera, et cetera. But there are hardline conservatives who are opposed to this plan because they say it doesn't do enough to cut government spending. This CR, this temporary funding measure, doesn't have any spending cuts in it. And there were hardline conservatives here in the House who wanted spending cuts attached to a CR. And that's right now why they are opposing the Speaker's plan. And there are enough of them, again, we're talking dozens here, who, if they stuck together, means that Johnson has to turn to Democratic votes now to put this over the goal line. And we've heard from Democrats who say they're open to bailing Johnson out here, but certainly not the position the Speaker wanted to be in weeks ago when we were staring down the barrel of this government shutdown, having to turn to Democrats to pass his plan today, Kira. Well, Democrats seem to be leaning toward voting yes on the bill. What do you think the incentive is here? Well, different Democrats I've talked to have different opinions about this plan. There are some who say they just don't like that the plan is, as one put it, novel. Another put it as a gimmick. But still, they're open to it because nobody wants a government shutdown. There are others who have just straight up said they're open to this plan. And then there are some that have called it a win because, as you and I have been talking about over the course of the day, it continues until those two different deadlines, funding levels that were put in place last year by a Democratic control. House of Representatives when Nancy Pelosi was the speaker. And so there are some progressive Democrats at this hour who believe that keeping that funding in place, at least for the next few months, is a win in their eyes. And that's why they're going to vote for this. And again, Johnson needs those votes because there are a lot of Republicans voting in lockstep, in lockstep rather, against his plan. Well, if it passes, what's next? And if it doesn't? <laughs> Yeah, Chuck Schumer, the top Democrat in the Senate who controls that chamber, because again, remember, Democrats control the Senate, has already indicated that he's in favor of this plan from the Speaker, and certainly he said he doesn't want a government shutdown, so if it passes the House, he's looking to put this all on the floor in the Senate relatively quickly, where it would be expected to pass as well, provided everything goes procedurally smoothly in that chamber. The White House came out against this plan when Speaker Johnson first unveiled it. They said it was, in a sense, counterproductive because, again, Democrats accused it as being gimmicky because it's got two different funding tracks, as I just described. But nobody wants a government shutdown again, Kira, so you're looking at the possibility as well that if this passes with Democratic support in the House and in the Senate, it would certainly put the president in a position where he would almost have to support this and have to sign it into law because enough Democrats have gotten on board and supported this measure and, of course, if he wouldn't sign it, that would likely trigger a shutdown. Well, members of Congress were also shown this footage from October 7th, that Hamas attack on innocent Israelis. What are you hearing from lawmakers about the reaction to that, and, and how does this move things forward? Yeah, that happened this morning, in part organized by the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And we heard from lawmakers who emerged from behind those closed doors where some footage that they saw had never been seen before, or at least never been released publicly before, uh, and they were deeply disturbed by what they saw. Um, Speaker, or excuse me, uh, Chairman Mike McCall of the Foreign Affairs Committee, who organized this, uh, said that it demonstrated the brutality of that attack by Hamas and said that he wanted lawmakers to see this video so as to not forget about exactly what that attack looked like and exactly what the Israelis who encountered that attack experienced. And it comes, remember, Kira, as Congress is at this inflection point about continued assistance for Israel. The House already passed a plan 
that's got about $14 billion in assistance for Israel in its war against Hamas. That plan is dead on arrival in the Senate because it doesn't include funding for Ukraine. The Senate is instead going to do its own plan that links funding for Israel to funding for Ukraine, and that sets up a collision course between the House and the Senate about what's best in terms of funding for Israel. And while all that plays out, you have that ongoing conflict transpiring in that region. Jay O'Brien on the Hill for us. See you soon and as we get closer to that vote. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.